Hey guys, and welcome back to another new Animal Crossing video. I'm Crossing Channel, and if you're like me, it's possible that you've been playing New Horizons for quite a while now. Even if you're new to the game, it's entirely possible that you might be wanting more out of each day in the game. I've decided to take a look at 5 things you can do every day to keep yourself entertained, to get more out of your gameplay, and to keep yourself busy between major in-game events and updates. So if you're feeling a little burnt out or bored like me, or just want to experience more from New Horizons, join me as I take a look at these 5 things to do every day. If you're excited for this video, be sure to leave a like, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and turn on channel notifications for more Animal Crossing videos. Number 1. Redesign when I've been at my most bored in New Horizons, I've tended to focus on totally redesigning spaces on my island. This can take up a lot of time, so it's something you could stretch out through many days and keep progressing with as time goes by. I've managed to transform some of the areas of my island that I didn't like so much into something totally new, making me feel like I wasn't even on the same island anymore, which has been really exciting, honestly. I've tended to chip away at some areas of my island each and every day rather than doing it all in one single session as this feels a lot more overwhelming when you do it that way. So I recommend changing your island one bit at a time and focusing specifically on the areas you aren't as satisfied with. The transformation could really help you feel more passionate about playing the game again since the island is where you're going to be spending most of your time. My Able Sisters area received one of the biggest transformations on my entire island and I actually find myself coming here a lot more now than I did in the past. I can just enjoy this particular spot a lot because of all the effort and work that I have put into it. Hopefully you could feel the same by transforming a big spot like this on your own island. If you like decorating and want some tips, I've got plenty of videos on my channel based on island decorating, terraforming and more, so feel free to check those out and steal any of my ideas. There's so many good ideas that you can use with your island, so get transforming. Number 2. Collecting Seasonal DIYs This one might be one of the trickiest things on this list purely because it is luck based, but it certainly give you a new goal to work towards and one that could definitely keep you busy in New Horizons. When it comes to seasonal DIY recipes there are literally so many. No matter what hemisphere you're in, there are likely to be seasonal DIY recipes available in the balloons that float onto your island every 5 minutes. With tricks being discovered that can help make this process easier, like creating a giant wall along your beach, going out there and hunting for seasonal DIY recipes could be a fun new goal for you to try and work towards every day in New Horizons. Since these are time limited, it'll also give you even more reason to keep playing and striving to get the recipes. There's so many cool items out there that you can get via seasonal DIY recipes too, so it could be a great way to spruce up your island with some of the rarer items in the game. Completing your DIY collection could honestly be one of the most satisfying things in New Horizons as crafting is such an important feature, so it's definitely a pretty cool goal to strive for, at least until they decide to add even more new items to the game for you to collect. Until then, keep a look out for those balloons each and every day to keep yourself busy, you never know what you might find. Number 3. Helping New Players A lot of new players have joined us recently, with many getting the game for the very first time at Christmas. This means they'll most likely be quite a bit behind the rest of us, and this could at times be a frustrating experience for those who want to catch up to everyone else. Helping new players out could be a great new goal to go for every day, and there are many specific ways you can do this without trying to trouble yourself too much. One way would be to collect any of the DIY recipes around your island, whether this is from a bottle on the beach, your villagers crafting, or even from a balloon. Any spare recipes you get each day could be given to players who might be missing these recipes. It certainly helped them get a head start and this is what the recipes are there for. Another would be to check the little board outside of Nook's Cranny which shows off hot items. I'm willing to bet that plenty of you haven't done this in a long time, but if Nook's Cranny is wanting some particularly easy or profitable items that they'll give more bells for, this could be really useful for new players that you could invite over. Finally, and maybe most importantly, check your turnip prices. If you've got a lot of bells yourself, you might have stopped doing this, but there are so many players out there who would appreciate high turnip prices so they can get a nice head start on the stalk market. If you get a really high price, there's plenty of avenues you could use like social media, Reddit, and even sites designed specifically for sharing high turnip prices so you can help out other players. This could really help out your fellow players and it's something you can check every day in the game, so it'll just give you something a little extra to do each day in the game, and you can feel happy knowing that you've helped out lots of other players. Number 4. New Nookmile Challenges Did you know that the Nookmile Plus challenges you will get actually change with the seasons? For example, in winter you can start collecting Nookmiles for doing things like catching snowflakes and building snowmen too. 
You might find that you already have a lot of Nook Miles, but new updates to the game have proved that you could be spending a lot of these in the future on new upgrades via the Nook Mile Redemption Machine. In the past, we've had to spend a lot of Nook Miles on things like new hairstyles, reactions, and more. This means it's always a good idea to chase more Nook Miles, and these new tasks could encourage you to try new things every day to earn a few extra Nook Miles to save up. I personally wouldn't usually go around catching snowflakes or building snowmen every day, but in order to get the extra Nook Miles, it's actually a pretty good idea. Not only will you get the benefits of actually doing these tasks, but the Nook Miles are always going to be useful in one way or another. Definitely check out the Nook Miles screen to see if you've got any new exciting tasks that you could use in the game to earn yourself even more Nook Miles. Let's hope that within future updates we can see even more uses for our Nook Miles, and with the potential of new reactions, hairstyles and more being added, it seems very likely that we will need to be redeeming these at a future date. Either way, there are lots of cool items to collect on this screen already, and Nook Mile tickets are always useful, so get a hold of some of those too. Number 5, Island Visitors Even though some of the Island Visitors have been in the game since the very start, Plenty have been added through updates too, meaning there are literally so many characters that you can visit your island each and every day. Searching for these guys and taking them up on the challenges and tasks they provide to you is a really good idea as they can unlock so much for these guys. For example, you need to complete Gulliver's challenges at least 30 times to be able to get the recipe for the Golden Shovel, which may be one of the most difficult golden tools to get as it will require you being lucky enough to see Gulliver on your beach. Seeking out which villager has come to your island every day is a great way to get more out of your gameplay experience, and maybe even try some new things. I don't know about you, but I've literally never bothered with LaBelle, for example, and I kind of regret doing this, so now every time I see her, I'm trying to do her tasks. Her rewards aren't exactly the best, but hey, it's worth a go and it gives you something to do. You can also earn Nook Miles this way by completing enough tasks for certain characters like Wisp and Gulliver, and you could find yourself unlocking items that you didn't have before too through these characters. If you've already completed everything you need to with these characters, then you could let other players know who's visiting. They may be able to enjoy the services of characters like Red and Leaf who offer some exclusive items, so this could help your fellow players out a whole lot. I hope you guys enjoyed these 5 things you can do every day and found them useful too. As we wait for more updates, events and happenings in the game, it's always a good idea to try out new things that can enhance your gameplay experience and keep you playing the game whilst you wait for new things to happen. If you want to help support me and my channel, click the join button down below the video or the link in the description to become a channel member and a member of the Bob's Gang. You can get a whole bunch of really cool perks for doing so, such as exclusive emojis, a badge by your name, exclusive content and posts, and so much more, so be sure to check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like, show support, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and turn on channel notifications for more Animal Crossing videos. You can check out my links and my merch in the description, and two Animal Crossing videos on the right side of the screen. Thank you once again for watching.